Today we are talking obituaries and the important role that they play in your genealogy. Now obituaries can reveal a lot of really interesting information about your ancestors. And in the article, A Genealogist's Guide to Finding and Using Historical Obituaries, which was published in the Biometry Magazine, author Shannon Combs explains everything you need to know about using and finding obituaries. And good news, she's here right now to tell us more. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for being here. It's so good to see you again. I know you're a busy lady, um, but this is a terrific article. And I, I just think of obituaries as being such a cornerstone of, of the work that we do. It's often one of the first places people start, right? Yeah, it, it is. They're pretty accessible for most people. Um, Sometimes you have to dig a little deeper, the further back in time you go, but they seem to be one of the basic, I guess you could call staples, bread and butter type uh, documents that genealogists try to find. Exactly. And we typically find them in newspapers. So I'd love to start there because obituaries sure. are not the only kind of death record we're finding in newspapers, right? No, there's, it's not. There can be actually several different types of death records published in a newspaper. Of course, the obituary is the most common, but you know, you can also have uh, funeral announcements. So the, you might not get the obituary, but maybe you can find that, you know, uh, the announcement that this funeral home is servicing this family or that this, the wake will occur at such and such place, or the religious ceremony will occur at this church with, you know, graveside services. Um, in addition to that, you sometimes can find uh, what are, were called for a long time cards of thanks, where families would put um, articles in the newspaper, essentially in the advertisement uh, personal type section, thanking people for coming and participating in uh, the service of their loved one. So there's a wide variety of different types of information um, that if you don't know it's there, no reason to go look for it. Exactly. I remember I was doing some newspaper research um, in the British newspaper archives uh, for my husband's family, and I was floored. Now, this isn't really a death notice, but it's death related. And there was an entire coroner's inquest published in the newspaper. Yeah. And I, I didn't realize that we could find something like that. So it's wonderful to see the, the depth of the kinds of information that surround the death of a person that could be found in newspapers. Right, and those aren't as common here in the United States, but right. if your loved one died in a larger city, you can sometimes find those in the newspapers. Um, I was doing some research and found uh, in, from San Francisco, and they have published books of coroner's inquests. So they're not in newspapers, but the announcement was in the newspaper that there was an mm -hmm. inquest. And then I could go to the um, the library, thankfully these were all digitized, and find them online where I would find all sorts of information about the person, their family, the circumstances of their death. And if you're doing family medical histories, sometimes those can be real gold mines. Yes, well, okay, so let's take a moment and talk about the okay. history of obituaries because you know when we understand as you know the history of any kind of genealogical record then we do a lot better job of utilizing it so um give us a little bit of a background story on obituaries how long have they been around sure so you can find obituaries in even some of the earliest colonial newspapers here in the united states um simply sometimes they were you know somebody passing through or information from you know they had died abroad and it has come back and there might be a little note in a paper um in the early 1800s it, you can kind of, it's going to sound kind of strange, but you can see themes developing around newspaper obituaries. And sometimes, you know, if it was a very important person to the community, you're going to be more than likely to find it. And sometimes these early, unfortunately, I should say, these early newspaper um, obituaries, they don't have a lot of family information, but you'll find all sorts of 
virtuous prose written about them, I guess you could say, because they were, you know, talking about, you know, how godly and worthy they were and those types of things. Um, then the obituary started to morph and actually became a part of the personal and advertisement section of the newspaper. So one reason you may not find information in an obituary for your ancestor is because your the family didn't have the money to pay for the obituary to put be put in. And then if they weren't a real prominent person, they wouldn't get the, you know, prime real estate on, in the actual reading sections. And so, you know, yeah, if your family were on the poor side, you might not find anything about them, unfortunately. And then as the 20th century came in, it started once again, the, I want to say, not necessarily a celebration of death, but a celebration of people's accomplishments. Mm -hmm. So you start finding late 1800s into the early 20th century is what is how the obituary as we know it today started to evolve. Um, it went from maybe one or two lines about a person dying to, you know, three and four paragraphs about them, their families, especially if they had, you know, been a pensioner or a veteran, um, were a pioneer of a town. The early 20th century saw a lot of those people who had, you know, really struck it out west for their fame and fortune um, start passing away in those towns. And sometimes you would even find the obituary not only in the place where they died, but in their hometowns back further to the east. So you might find obituaries, especially for those, I guess, pioneering folk, you could call them, um, back where they came from. That's a great point. And that's really um, kind of a nice newspaper research clue because I think it even expands beyond obituaries, which is that idea of um, people often started back east, but then yeah. relocated out west. And those, uh, particularly I think with the telegraph coming into play, they could send that article back and get it to all those people who would mm -hmm. be really interested to know whatever happened to that person. Right. And of course, now in the 21st century, we're moving more and more away from print newspapers for the obituaries and we're going to almost completely digital newspapers for the obituaries and digital obituary sites. Um, I know when I've had several of my uh, close family members in the last 10 years who have passed away, the funeral homes are even offering to put obituaries on their sites. Um, and when my mother passed away, I was speaking with the funeral home director and they had kept records. This was um, in Texas and they had records going back several decades with written obituaries that, you know, if you called the funeral home, you could see if they had a written up, not necessarily was ever published in the paper because the family couldn't afford it, but the funeral home had it. How interesting. Gosh, it really, mm -hmm. really drives home that point that it, you, you got to know what kind of time frame you're looking at, right? To see what yeah. you would expect to find and, and where you'd expect to find it. And I would imagine it's true that uh, in small towns, you might be more likely mm -hmm. to find obituaries than perhaps in Chicago. Um, yeah, because, you know, everybody knows everybody, small mm -hmm. hometown newspaper. Those would be more likely to have the longer, more in-depth um, information written about a person talking about their family and their you know where they came from what they did you know if they were the pillar of a community or even just you know a local farmer and then the cities are unfortunately unless you were a prominent citizen that's where you're more than likely to find a paragraph or less maybe only even a few sentences you know first and last name age died on this date that may be all you get unfortunately. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Well, so let's talk about where to find these historical newspapers. Sure. Um, where do we start? Okay, well, there's a lot of different newspapers online. Um, of course, the Library of Congress Chronicling America is a great start. Um, start there, see if one of your local newspapers or the place that you're researching local to that. Uh, see if they have a newspaper for the time frame out there. 
One, because it's free. I mean, you gotta start with the free sources first. Um, Family Search also has a free obituary, historical obituary site that you can search. Um, and then you can move into the paid sites where there's newspapers.com and Ancestry, uh, Genealogy Bank. They all have um, obviously newspapers and then obituaries as a part of it. Um, sometimes you can also contact the local library for the place the person had died. Uh, I've had good luck calling, um, I'm originally from Indiana, and calling around to the various county libraries. And unfortunately, they don't have a lot of the newspapers digitized, but you know, for a small fee, they were willing to send me a photocopy. And in some cases now I can get emailed PDFs for a, a few dollars just, and you know, and to support the local library, I'm okay with doing that because our local libraries need a lot of support. Um, so don't give up if you can't find it digitized, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. There's a lot of information, there's a lot of places out there, especially for older newspapers, but you know, just you'd be resourceful, I guess you could say. Well, and you talked about um, online indexes. So sometimes we don't get the actual obit right, but we get enough information out of the index that we could then go track it down in person. Yeah, that's very true. I've used those several times. One of the links that is in the, the article is to the Dayton, Ohio index. Um, and you can put in as much information as you know. Sometimes you have to, sometimes I find it's easier to start with a little bit of information and then, you know, sort through and add details to weed through the, the large number. Um, but all it will give you is the person's name the date of publication, so not even the date of death, so it, you know it's somewhere in that time frame, and then the page issue uh, column number so that you can contact the Dayton Public Library and they can help get you the paper. And there's a lot of the libraries are like that. Wonderful. When you do online searches for obituaries, mm -hmm. Um, do you tend to, to just go in straight and do a search on the name or do you go into the card catalog and really find newspaper and obituary collections and then try to search? I mean, do you have any special tactics that you use to try to make sure you're successful? Um, this is, that is actually a really great question um, because I, and I think it, it's going to be it's, and it depends. If I have a really unique name and I am pretty sure of the location, maybe time frame of the death. Sometimes I'll just start looking for that person, especially like I said, if it's a really unique name. I had an ancestor named Bathsheba Kelly. So I'm thinking there's not many people named Bathsheba. <laughs> So <laughs> I, 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 I was pretty confident maybe if I just started looking for her and about the time frame she died in Ohio, we'd be good to go. Yeah. Um, other times, yeah, I want to, I first want to narrow it down because you don't, you don't want to just go searching willy nilly, right? That's going to mm -hmm. waste a lot of time. Try to find like a five year, maybe a 10 year span if you're not quite too sure, but you have a time frame that'll help weed them down. Um, if it's unfortunately like a common name, you need to add in a lot more, maybe those advanced searches. You, it may take you going town by town or mm -hmm. year by year as you go, uh, weeding through all the names. Um, but if I can, if there is an index or a database like that, I do like to use those first because that can help weed out a lot of information right off the bat. And then, you know, print it out, write it down, keep it on a on the separate um, frame or tab or whatever you need to, so you can actually then go, you know, okay, I'm gonna to go to this page and this issue, okay, that there, this page and this issue, and it can really help. Excellent. And don't you know, give up. <laughs> I agree with that. Never give up, never surrender, right? <laughs> That's right. Um, so when you're searching, uh, mm -hmm. I know I had an experience once where I went into a, a newspaper in California and I was actually looking through a microfilm and I knew that obituaries were always on page seven because I just had been through so many issues of this particular newspaper. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm looking on the date when it would have been the next issue following the death of my great grandfather. And he wasn't there. And I was like, what? So I just get the next week and I went back a week. Maybe I got the date wrong. Turned out he was on the front page. And that goes back to you saying, you know, some people were kind of considered the pioneer of the town, even though in the family, he wasn't Mr. Celebrity or anything, but he was revered for that. And they had him on the front page. So I'd love to have you touch on when, when you don't see them where you think you're going to see them, what's some of the timing that we could expect as to when obits get published and any other tips on when they're not where you think they'll be? What other kinds of places within the paper do you tend to find these kinds of articles? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's actually a really um, good question again. So it's, it's, it's one of those, I guess you could say it's an I depend. One, like you said, even if you don't think that your family member was someone famous, if you're not finding them where you expect to find them, I've had to go, you know, cover to cover of the newspapers. Yeah. Um, Sometimes if, you know, if your ancestor died in mysterious circumstances, there might not be an obituary, but there might be a court case about it. Right. So that's always a good thing to know. Um, because those death records, especially, you know, if it was salacious gossip, it's, it's going to turn up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's newsworthy. Um, that's right. If it's newsworthy, it's going to be in there. So I was recently doing some research on professional genealogists because I wanted to find out when genealogists, you know, became professionals, started, oh, yeah. started becoming an employment type of thing here in the United States. And because I figured an obituary would give me, if they were 80 years old when they died, let's say, you know, I can kind of backtrack to when, you know, maybe they started, became a professional. And it, I did not find these obituaries in the late 1800s where I thought they should be. Sometimes they were in the personal section. Sometimes they were in the um, miscellaneous advertisement section. But then once again, it goes back to somebody had to pay the newspaper to put this in it. So they wouldn't be, you know, in these larger newspapers. I was looking in like the New York Times and the Hartford newspaper and the Boston Globe and the Washington Post, Chicago Tribune. I wasn't finding these obituary pages for them. I was kind of finding in the personal section, which kind of threw me for a loop a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, you almost have to follow the money, right? <laughs> Yeah. Figuring out how people got paid. So interesting that you're talking about the history of genealogists because I remember uh, it was quite a few years ago, I went into the census records and started searching on mm -hmm. that as the occupation or the industry. And that's really interesting too, how you clusters of people and who was doing it, you know, a hundred years ago. Yeah. Interesting. Time frame. So obituaries were not always published the very next, next week, right? Right. So a lot of people think that, you know, I guess one, it depends on the religion and the culture that you're looking at, what was, you know, done in that time frame or in that place. And this, and this might sound kind of odd to some of us who don't live in really cold places, but you know, when the ground freezes in our northernmost states, you know, sometimes you wouldn't be able to bury somebody until the next spring. And, a, and you may have a death notice when they died, but then a full obituary for when the service and the burial took place. So sometimes you may have several month gap in between when they died and when information was published about them in the newspaper. Um, the other thing may be, especially if they were in business or they traveled, um, or if they were in the military, you know, either or for a uh, merchant vessel, they could have died abroad. And so, but you're only going to he hear the information, see the death notice or the obituary when the ship lands again. Right. You know, we didn't have cell phones. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, okay, so we need to kind of uh, keep an open mind, it sounds like, about where within the pages it's, it, they might appear, um, mm -hmm. when they would have been published, and uh, and also just the fact that there are so many different places where we might be able to find them online. Um, before I let you go, I'd love to have you talk about, you have in the article kind of this section, the obituary fast facts. 
what are some of the um, interesting facts and, and little uh, bits that you want to share with us? Sure. Well, some of the things that you can find in an obituary, which can be surprising, we we, of course, as genealogists, want to find all the family information. We want to know when they were born, who their parents were, if possible, you know, family members, that types of things. But other things that you can find in obituaries are employment information, which can then give you clues to where else they might have been. Um, if they were a migrant to that area it can give you information you know where they originated from if they um, immigrated here sometimes they list you know the they landed at the port of philadelphia or new york or new orleans or wherever and that can help lead to information for passenger lists and future information but most importantly anybody who's listed in that has to be somebody known to the person either a friend, a family, a close acquaintance. And so I want to encourage people to not forget those collateral lines because you might be able to find information looking for them, once again, going back to your ancestor. Great point. Shannon, tell folks a little bit about uh, what you do and how they can learn more about what you work on in the world of genealogy. Sure, so I'm an author, a lecturer, um, an, an educator, <laughs> full-time student, no, <laughs> perpetual student, I should say, is what my father would call me. Um, but you can find me at my blog, which is Trials and Tribulations of a Self-Taught Family Historian. I know it's long, but just look for TNT Family History out there. Um, you can also find me on Facebook and LinkedIn and on Twitter. I'm not I'm not out on Twitter as much as I used to be. It's the pandemic really, you know, <laughs> brought me down to social media, you know. <laughs> I heard I'm getting you. back out there though. <laughs> um, so I spoke all across the United States. I've even spoke internationally in um, Scotland and in France for the Heraldic and Genealogical Congress. Um, but I think that's I come from a background of teachers, so I love educating, writing, lecturing, and helping people uh, learn more inf about their pasts and about who they are and who their families were, and I guess that's the big thing. Um, it doesn't help that my undergraduate degree was in human genetics, so sometimes I can throw a little bit of that DNA in there. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Shannon Combs-Bennett, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you.